It's now to time to present the Harry S. Truman Award to one of our two 2015 recipients, U.S. Representative Stephen Womack of Arkansas. I want you to know where your peeps are, sir. Here to speak on, on behalf of Representative Womack's many, well, sorry, Womack's many contributions to our nation's defense is Major General Mark Berry, the Adjutant General of Arkansas. Morning. Uh, back mid-December, I remember uh, just briefly, I, I got a phone call. I was getting off the airplane at Reagan National Airport, and, uh, and it's uh, Mark, uh, Steve Womack. He said, who would have thought it 30 years ago that uh, I would be representing the, uh, the great state of Arkansas in the United States Congress, and you'd be the adjutant general. And uh, I told him I always knew he'd be a congressman, but I thought I might make it the major, and that would be it. But uh, General Ashton Hurst and um, uh, General Hargett, thank you so much uh, for the honor of allowing me to introduce my great friend of 30 years, uh, my congressman and our congressman. And I say our congressman on purpose because he is a congressman of the National Guard, not only representing the 3rd Congressional District of Arkansas, but he is a uh, congressman of the National Guard. He is one of us. He is uh, born of the cloth of a soldier. He's the son of a soldier, the brother of a soldier. He's the go-to guy on Capitol Hill by congressional leaders when they need anything uh, relating to National Guard affairs. He is one of our strongest advocates in Washington, D.C. And Congressman Womack is the guy that Nagus, Ingus, AGA US, Generals Tanini, Ed Tanini, I think he's here, uh, Gus Hargett, uh, and soon uh, uh, Glenn Curtis will be calling him all the time uh, when in the time of need because he's a guy that we can depend on. Uh, Congressman Womack is a native of Russellville, Arkansas, and now General Grass and uh, Steve. Uh, they may take exception to this, but around age 16, uh, uh, Congressman Womack's family realized that um, Missouri never was going to have a football team, so they moved to, uh, to Arkansas. Uh, Hey, the Missouri guys out there, no Missouri guys complaining. Uh, but the congressman, uh, when he moved to Arkansas, he learned how to read and write, and it led to his commission as a second lieutenant in the Arkansas Army National Guard, so we're very proud of him. The congressman was elected to, uh, to be the mayor of uh, one of the most thriving, fastest growing uh, areas of uh, Northwest Arkansas. He served as mayor of Rogers for 12 years before uh, being elected to the United States Congress. And while in the Army, the congressman served in a variety of command and staff positions, including uh, command of the 2nd Battalion, 153rd Infantry, 39th Separate Infantry Brigades. And following the uh, tra tragic events of 9-11, the congressman's battalion was mobilized for duty uh, with the MFO Sinai Egypt in uh, 2002. Uh, and it was marked the first time in MFO history the U.S. Battalion mission was conducted by a pure National Guard unit and he received praise with his leadership of leading from the front uh, from the highest levels of military leadership. The congressman retired from the Army National Guard with over 30 years of service as the rank of colonel. He received numerous uh, awards to include the uh, Legion of Merit. In the House, the congressman serves as the Appropriations Committee uh, and the Defense Finance Services and Labor, Health, and Human Services Subcommittees, which you cannot get on a card as well as the House Budget Committee. And it is my distinct honor and privilege to uh, introduce to you my buddy, my friend, my congressman. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Steve Womack. Thank you. Thank you very much. To my uh, friend of the TAG of Missouri, I want you to know that while I provided most of the remarks for that introduction, I did not provide those initial remarks <laughs> and those terrible things General Barry said about the Show Me State. I, I have great affection for the Show Me State. Uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful place, and I've got great, great memories of the 16 years that I spent there. This is more than a nice honor. 
aside from having earned the confidence of an established electorate when seeking the office of mayor and now congressman, receiving the Truman Award stands by itself in the ranking of awards and honors I've been fortunate to receive over the many years of service in the public arena. Forgive me when I tell you while humbled and honored, there's a part of me that recognizes there are many others out there at least as deserving, if not more so, than me. Nonetheless, I am grateful for the recognition, and it is a blessing beyond words to be standing on this platform in front of some of America's greatest heroes. I come from a guard family. My dad, a brother, two of my sisters, all have guard backgrounds. It's been a part of my life since childhood. I have a special place in my heart for guard families. I know firsthand the challenges of the M-Day soldier and airman. I've lived it. And I understand that it takes a very special person to be willing to work a day job Monday through Friday, make a unit training assembly on the weekend, oftentimes after a very long drive, and return in time to have Sunday dinner with the family, if you're lucky, and then do it all over again, month after month, year after year. I know the difficulty in trying to balance life, family, your job and career, hobbies, vacations, illness. I also know how guard service has changed over time, professional development, additional unit training assemblies, the reality of mobilizations, stressful exercises, APFTs, promotion boards, even trying to make that silly beret look right. <laughs> I'm intimately aware of the pressures on guard force structure, end strength, full-time manning and modernization. I was fighting for these issues as a lieutenant in 1979, and I continue to advocate for this institution in an entirely different capacity today. I guess that's why the Truman Award is such a special honor for me. As all of you know, the National Guard has been around long before our country was founded. And never before has the Guard been more relevant than today. Since 9-11, more than three quarters of a million individual mobilizations have occurred. Half of Guardsmen today have combat experience. And if you trace the utilization of the Guard back to 9-11, one Guard mobilization, the first overseas deployment of a Guard battalion, has a special place in my heart. As those ruins smoldered in New York, D.C., and in that Pennsylvania field, it was a Guard battalion, an Arkansas Guard battalion, that gave our brothers and sisters in the active force and leaders in Washington a real glimpse of the readiness and capabilities of America's National Guard. I know because I commanded that battalion. Those gunslingers mobilized on short notice. They trained in substandard conditions. They met an accelerated timeline for certification and deployed on time and at full strength in the Sinai, Egypt, where they rewrote the standards by which the multinational force and observer mission units are evaluated today. Let me add that following the Arkansas Guardsmen were Oregon, the 41st, and Oklahoma, the 45th, that continued that tradition. America's Guard is not only good at its domestic job, it's pretty darn good at its federal mission, be it humanitarian, 
peacekeeping, or combat. This capability has proven invaluable to our nation for the last 14 years, especially as the Department of Defense faces downward financial pressures. You have acquitted yourselves very well with those who ever doubted your ability. I believe those two criteria, proven capability and value, are fundamental to ensuring a safe and successful America in a world where the proliferation of threat is unprecedented. And that means that the Pentagon and the Congress must understand the importance of strengthening the National Guard, not using it as a pay for. Now more than ever, it's essential that you are engaged with your members of Congress. I want to say that again. Now more than ever, it is essential that you are engaged with your members of Congress. And it's critical that your support for Nogus remains strong. I've long cherished the very close relationship I've had with Gus Hargett. There's not a more passionate, knowledgeable, and influential advocate for guard issues than Gus. He is well respected, he is determined, and perhaps more important than anything, he understands how Washington works. Gus, I want to thank you for your friendship and your counsel down through the years. I am eternally grateful. Before I close, I'd also like to acknowledge my fellow guardsmen from Arkansas. General Barry and I have been close friends dating back to our time at the University of Arkansas when we competed for the best and brightest minds in high school to become cadets in our respective programs. He for the Air Force, me for the Army. We won most of those battles, by the way. <laughs> that friendship has only grown in the last 20 plus years. I'm grateful for your friendship and support as well. And I note that in this audience today, there are other former adjutants general of the state of Arkansas with whom I've had the honor and privilege of serving with and under. Uh, Bill Wofford, who just recently retired, and uh, before him, Major General Don Morrow. Again, grateful for your leadership and your mentorship down through the years. And to my friend, General Frank Grass and his beautiful bride, Pat, I admire the work you do, the personal and professional example you set, and the way you represent our guard. I am I'm so proud that you represent us to the nation. Our guard prospers greatly from your leadership. Thank you. In my office, there are many reminders of my guard service. There's one reminder that's depicted in a beautiful print of a painting that was done for the War College back many years ago. And it's a, it's a scene that I have often repeated, particularly to young audiences it is a scene of a bunker in Brest, France, where a one-star American general is about to accept the surrender of a three-star German general. And this German asks this question, so I am to surrender to you 
what are your credentials? And without hesitation, the American general turned to the 20 or so Joes that were guarding that bunker behind him. And he said, these are my credentials. There is a message there for all of America. We can do a lot of amazing things on our own. But there's one thing that is inescapable to me from the position of a defense appropriator and as an American citizen and of a veteran of this country. And that is that America cannot be truly successful against the threats that we face today without the strength and the capability of a well-resourced National Guard. You, my friends, are America's credentials. There's a Minuteman statue sitting just to the left of my desk. It gives me the chance to pause and reflect from time to time when I look at it about my service in the Guard, and I call on all those experiences to help shape a lot of my decisions in Washington. Never does a day pass that I don't take that moment to think about those great years, 30 plus. This trophy will find a special place in my office and it will always represent the very special place in my heart I have for all of you. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless your families. And God bless America.